Greetings and welcome once again to LegalizeFreedom.com. My name is Greg Moffat and my guest today is Chris Cole from Drone Wars UK. His website is dronewars.net. We'll be talking about the growing use of drones, otherwise known as unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs, in combat and surveillance. As governments and military increasingly engage in warfare and spying by remote control, who or what is really in charge? Aerial drones and ground-based robots are becoming ever more intelligent and autonomous. Once they become self-aware, will humans be removed from split-second life and death decisions? And as this technology moves from the combat zone to our streets, will the nightmare futures of science fiction finally become reality? Well, hello and welcome, Chris, and uh, thank you very much for joining us today on LegalizeFreedom.com. Hello, thanks for having me. Now, we're here to discuss um, the issue of drones, um, otherwise known as uh, unmanned aerial uh, vehicles, sometimes UAVs. And um, for those who are, uh, most people will be aware of the use of drones uh, in battlefield situations due to uh, some mainstream news coverage. But um, to give us a wider view um, of the issue, perhaps you could tell us something about the background to the development and use of drones. Sure. Um, well, various people trace uh, the origins of drones back even a couple of hundred years, really, to um, balloons um, were laden with explosives. But I think really uh, in modern history, I suppose, it goes back to the First World War where British um, RAF pilots began to use radio-controlled uh, aircraft um, but when the war ended, the First World War ended, that kind of quickly uh, stopped that line of development. It was taken up by the US initially and then later Israel. And really since the 70s, early 80s, there's been a, a, a growing uh, development of, as you say, unmanned aerial vehicles or drones. Um, I think over the last five or six years, really, we've seen this massive increase. I think a particular development was around just before and just after 9-11, when the first um, uh, missile was launched from an unmanned aerial vehicle. Um, initially, a test uh, took place in the United States, and then it was used for the first time in Afghanistan. Um, so a crucial element of all this has been the, the development of uh, military-hardened satellites around the globe, which has enabled the drones to be controlled from distances of thousands of miles away. So we now have drones operating in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan that most people know about, but also U.S. drones are launching strikes in Yemen and Somalia and Libya. And the UK also uses armed drones. There have been about 250 drones, British drone strikes in Afghanistan, and Israel too uh, uses armed drones. So they're the three countries that at the moment are using armed drones, but about 50 other countries as well are known to be developing or trying to acquire armed drones. Now, in case people aren't aware, um, essentially these things, as you might expect, I suppose, they look a lot like um, conventional uh, fighter planes, in some cases like conventional bombers. Um, so basically, obviously the operation of them is a little bit more sophisticated than it was in the remote control days. Um, but um, so uh, operation systems, how are these things controlled um, today? Uh, well, Drones, the term drones and unmanned vehicle covers a kind of wide range of different uh, aircraft. Um, uh, the kind of drone that we're, meant, we're talking about that looks like um, a conventional aircraft is the kind of larger end, the, um, the military uh, drones, or military drones. But there are also much smaller drones um, that can raise, you know, that can be the size of um, a small model aircraft, really, right up to, as you say, the kind of drones that look pretty much like a conventional uh, aircraft, military aircraft. Um, they're controlled, um, the larger ones indeed, the ones that we're talking about that are used in Pakistan and Afghanistan and around the world for 
uh, launching drone strikes, controlled via satellites, as I say, using wireless technology. And the pilots sit in um, a cockpit. Well, that isn't in the cockpit. It can be thousands of miles away. Um, and they control, uh, they have a, a set of controls very, very similar at the moment to a traditional cockpit. And they control um, via satellites the aircraft. There is a one or two second delay, which, which leads to problems sometimes. But it's uh, at the moment, the ones that are in uh, operation are controlled uh, remotely. Drones are now being developed that will, are not being controlled via a, a pilot, but they are flying much more autonomously. Uh, a pre-programmed flight plan it is programmed into the, into the drone's computer and it follows. So they aren't controlled uh, via uh, the ground, if you like. So there are two types. The, the ones that are being used at the moment are controlled by pilots, but uh, more advanced ones are being tested and developed all the time. Yes, well, we'll, we'll come on to the issue of um, of autonomous uh, drones and where that um, all might be going. Uh, we'll get onto that in due course. Um, but fundamentally, uh, could we just address the question of, of why drones have been developed? Because some people will be thinking, um, OK, so you don't have a, a pilot actually up there in the sky in that machine. But beyond that, what, what's the great benefit? I mean, why has so much money gone into the development and deployment of these things? Well, there, there is a, a kind of various various reasons, really, why there's been this kind of massive uh, growth in the use of drones. Firstly, technological reasons, in that um, uh, because, as I say, of the, the, the development of wireless technology and the ability to transmit huge amounts of data wirelessly, um, together with miniaturization, the, the ability to, to, to make um, equipment much smaller, and, as I say, the growing availability of military hardened satellites. So technological reasons is one reason. There are economic reasons as well. Uh, drones at the moment tend to be much cheaper than a traditional military aircraft. So uh, uh, like an F-16 or a Tornado aircraft would tend to cost around 50 to $60 million, whereas a, a Reaper or Predator drone costs around 10 to $15 million. So that's another reason, uh, economics. Um, and <clears throat> Uh, strategic reasons. I think this is one of the most important reasons for military strats. The big difference between manned aircraft and drones is that drones are able to loiter in the sky for long periods of time. Um, a, a, a manned aircraft really can only be on station, if you like, for between four, four to six hours when the pilot is at their peak. Um, whereas the drones that are flying over uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan at the moment can pretty much stay on <clears throat> and loiter over a particular town or area or compound for 15, 16, 20 hours, something like that. Uh, and drones are being developed all the time to be able to stay uh, stay in the air much longer. Um, a Zephyr drone, which is an experimental drone, has just well, about a year ago now broken the record for staying aloft longest. It was stayed aloft for two weeks non-stop. And so that's a really big, important military strategic reason, the ability to loiter over a particular area for long periods of time. That's another reason. And, and I guess another reason is political. Uh, that is, um, uh, in the kind of modern age, uh, the public doesn't really like to see soldiers coming back in coffins or body bags uh, from interventions overseas. So there's a real uh, dislike of that. Drones obviously give you the ability to intervene overseas militarily without the risk to your own forces. So yeah. all those reasons, technological, economic, political, and strategic, have kind of come together really to see. And that's why we're seeing the kind of really massive increase in the use of armed drones. Yeah, well, you used the word uh, intervention there, which um, is something that you'll hear in the, in the mainstream media a lot, but uh, it's almost... Uh, sort of uh, sanitizes it, doesn't it? Because we shouldn't kid ourselves that um, whatever amount of surveillance um, is being conducted by drones, um, in most occasions, this is about killing people. 